science, you two. I hate to tell you this, but we have a problem. Where to begin? How about with this? Or with this? <laughs> I'm just curious. What about me says I'm looking for fashion advice from a middle-aged man on the internet who I don't know? Oh, uh, wait. <laughs> Silly of me. I forgot. It's not about me. It's about you. I'm so tired. Let's start really small, really basic, because this is a layered issue and we'll work our way up. Just like any media professional, I do of course give some consideration to what kind of makeup and clothes I wear when on camera. What's the lighting gonna be like? What color is the background? What's gonna make it easiest to wear a mic clip here and a mic pack somewhere around my waist, making sure I don't have any obvious or distracting branding on my clothing. So despite what you may think of my outfit, I have in fact chosen it rather carefully. And outside of those more practical considerations, my outfit, my makeup, my hair, my glasses are reflective of what I'm comfortable in, what my style is, what makes me happy, and what makes me feel like myself. But really, I shouldn't have to justify any of this to you. We shouldn't even be having this part of the conversation because you're recommending something for me to wear because it's what you want to see. Like I'm some kind of paper doll for your viewing pleasure. Huh. Now, if your first thought was, Oh, well, Mary must be so sad because you're saying she's ugly. Or, Now these are all really sensitive, their opinion doesn't matter. Then you have, unfortunately, completely missed the point. Because I also receive comments like this, or this, or these. And I feel the same way about them because they're part of the same problem, which is also behind comments like these, which are just plain misogyny, and comments like these, which are sexual harassment. All of these comments are varying degrees of objectification, which literally means to degrade to the status of a mere object. Now, does this mean that you have to be worried that you are never gonna be able to tell anybody you find them attractive again without being worried that they're gonna take offense? No. As long as we can all acknowledge that appearance is what women in the society often get the most praise or degradation for, we can understand and work within that framework to behave properly. Take a minute to stop and think. You're a smart person. Is this the only thing that you've ever complimented this person for? Is it the first thing you always mention when you talk to or about that person? Have you ever mentioned that anything else about them is valuable to you? For example, I love comments like this that tell me they really loved the video, they thought the content was interesting, they thought I did a good job. Oh, and by the way, your shirt's really cool. There's no problem with that at all. I do hope it goes without saying that all of this that we're talking about obviously does not apply to every man watching. Yes, the vast majority of my viewership on my personal channel is male, but the vast majority of the people who choose to participate in the comments do so very supportively and positively and constructively. And I can't thank you enough for being that kind of community. It's so awesome. Of course, with a channel like Seeker, where I do a lot of my other work and where there's a much larger audience, we're gonna have a higher proportion of people conducting themselves badly. That's just numbers. And hopefully we can recognize that even though we may not be directly directly perpetrating the bad stuff, it is collectively our problem. Let's take it to the street for a second. According to a 2014 study, 65% of women have experienced street harassment or unwanted interaction in public spaces between strangers that are motivated by a person's actual or perceived gender, sexual orientation, or gender expression. Which is exactly what this would be if someone said it to me on the street, but you know, because of the modern miracle that is technology, you can now yell it at me on the internet. Now, maybe you're yelling at your screen. But Mary, those comments are just compliments. They're nice comments. This same survey found that instead of feeling complimented or flattered, IRL street harassment made women feel angry, annoyed, nervous, and disgusted. These comments, whether in real life or on the internet, make us feel unsafe, 
not good about ourselves. There are men out there in the comments of the videos that I make about science who are really insisting on knowing my relationship status, my age, where I live. How am I supposed to feel safe putting videos out on the internet knowing that some men watch my videos just because of the way they feel about how I look? And that same feeling makes them feel entitled to personal details about my life for their own gratification. But we have to talk about it because I'm not the only one by a long shot. I was actually really inspired to make this video by a fellow science communicator, Dr. Sally LePage, who tweeted this. It's just so bloody tiring. The constant drip drip of people telling you you're too fat, you're dressed wrong, you're you're not f***able. And then you wonder why more women don't teach science on YouTube or why women have more mental health problems. Which honestly really just spoke to me. And someone, thank God, finally actually did a study on this so I can bring out some stats to quiet anyone who might want to say that personal anecdotes aren't reflective of reality. A media analysis study published in 2018 looked at 23,000 comments left on science YouTube channels and found that women get over four times as many comments on their appearance. Male hosts received almost no comments that were deemed sexist or sexual, while around 3% of the comments on female hosted videos were sexist or sexual. And while these numbers may seem small, there's no denying that there's a significant gender discrepancy in the kinds of attention that women receive online in STEM spaces, and that really can take a toll on one's motivation. When I receive those comments, and boy do I receive a lot of comments on my appearance and just generally sexualizing me, it not only makes the process of making a YouTube video less enjoyable, it means that it's, it's something that Normally when you would look forward to going to YouTube or making a video, it's now tinged with this oh, but you know that there's going to be some asshole that is commenting on your appearance or sexualizing you in some way. And that's not fun. But also, over time it eats away at your self-esteem and your mental health. And when your mental health is suffering, it's incredibly difficult to be creative. And YouTube is a creative industry. And so it just makes the whole job not only less enjoyable, just harder to do. And the authors of this study do think there could be a correlation between this kind of feedback environment and the prevalence of female science YouTube hosts. Of the 370 most popular STEM YouTube channels, only 32 of them are hosted by women. Now, I do want to take a moment to talk about something really important. This study in particular only took gender into account. No studies that I could find have done any research into the diversity of race or sexuality on science YouTube. And that in itself is a problem. As a white, able-bodied, straight, presenting woman in real life and on the internet, I only have to deal with a small fraction of the harassment that other marginalized groups have to deal with every day. Because this is every day as a woman. I was treated as something to be looked at by strangers way before I was ever treated as someone with something to say. I've had to fight for it and I've earned it with my education, with my work. I've been making videos about science on YouTube for six years, and now I've gotten to the point where I get paid to do it, and regularly, because I'm good at it. All for some man on the internet to say this. Your question right now may be, why go looking in the comments at all? Remember that stat from before about the number of female-led science YouTube channels? My goal as a science communicator on YouTube is to reach audiences that are not already looking for science content on the internet. If you take the top 10 most popular science YouTube channels, currently 75% to 95% of their viewership is male. And I know for a fact that that's not because women aren't interested in science, but it's maybe because women don't feel that comfortable or welcome in those spaces online. Can you imagine why? I firmly believe, and this is backed up by sociological research, that places where people can see themselves represented are places where people can see themselves participating. To get women participating in viewing these channels, in being hosts on these channels, 
and truly participating as professionals in STEM fields, we need more diversity in STEM media. And comments like this aren't gonna get us there. For those of you who maybe haven't caught my drift by now, here's the issue. Plain and simple. Every time someone leaves a comment on a science video of mine about how they think I'm sexy or they would prefer it if I wore this instead, that's sending a message to every single woman and girl watching that it doesn't matter what her brain is like, what she studied, or what she thinks. The only thing that matters is what you think about what she looks like. And that is hugely demeaning and discouraging. I truly believe if we can stop and think about and collectively analyze and discuss the kinds of behaviors and thought patterns and cultural norms that are behind seemingly innocuous comments about my choice of dress or what you think about what I look like, we will also be able to combat much more serious issues like sexism and harassment and assault in science workplaces. So people watching science YouTube, please help us make these spaces better and more welcoming. Support women being actively involved in producing science content and telling these stories. For women to watch and participate in the discussion. And ultimately for women to see themselves in these fields. Do better. Be better. Because I'm trying my best. Are you? Thank you so much to my very first patrons on Patreon. If you'd like to help me make even better videos even more regularly, you can head over to Patreon at the link in the description box for all kinds of tiers with all kinds of fun perks, including getting your name listed at the end of the video like these people right over here, very exciting. In addition to each tier's perks, patrons also get access to special versions of each video that includes outtakes and bloopers and extra footage, so if you're interested in that, go ahead and head over to my Patreon page. I've also left a very comprehensive list down in the comments below of some of my favorite underappreciated STEM YouTube channels, many of them run by women, my fellow queer community, and people of color, so definitely go and check those out if you get the chance. Also make sure you're following me on Instagram because throughout the month of March, which is Women's History Month, I will be shouting out some of my favorite STEM sidecommers on YouTube and other social media platforms who are doing some really awesome things to make science more accessible to the world. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.